Hi, my name is Tim with SI, and today we're going to be programming an SDN keypad using the USB programming cable. Step one, we'll connect the USB programming cable to the SDN keypad. Step two, we'll be using the application to configure and set the configuration to the SDN keypad. So connecting the USB programming cable to the keypad. First, we connect the USB programming cable to the PC, and then we connect the keypad directly to the RS-45. When we have power, a red LED on the back of the keypad will flash. We'll also see a flash on the USB programming cable when we first plug it in. Now let's open the application. Now that we've discussed the USB programming cable, the keypads, and the physical connections, we can install the software and configure the keypad. On the supplied USB drive, we have the software for the SDN keypad configuration. Once this has been downloaded and installed, then we can connect the USB programming cable to the PC and see if it has been identified and configured properly. In Device Manager, we can search for our USB programming cable under Ports. In here, we need to go into the properties and verify that the port settings are correct. The USB programming cable takes a baud rate of 4800 and a parity of odd to function correctly. After the configuration is correct, we can open the SDN keypad configuration software and configure the keypads. We connect to the keypad from the top left. We select the correct COM port and connect. Now, in here, we have eight buttons. There are eight buttons on the keypad. These are our eight buttons, switch DC numbers one through eight. Buttons one through five are the top five buttons on the keypad. Buttons six, seven, and eight are the stop, down, and up functions at the bottom of the keypad. All of these can be configured independently for different functions, for different motors, and or group of motors. So in here, each button on this keypad can be configured for several different options under either a press, hold, or release function. These functions can be an up command, down, stop, a go to intermittent position, uh, move to next intermittent position up, next intermittent position down, or a go to percentage, say 25%, 75% up. Now, they can also be configured for kind of multiple uh, commands from a single button. So in this case, we could say on button one, when I press the button, move up. When I release that button, stop. And I can do that for any of the group all, which can be set here under set all group address. We can set it for motor all, which would be every motor in the project from the field here. Or we can use the specific group or address of a specific motor, which can be set here. So with each button, we can configure any set of motors and or groups for any function. Now, now that we have the buttons configured for what we would like each function to do for each button, there's also a sequence button here at the bottom. When selected, you can see that the text is highlighted in purple. This lets you know that it is now in sequence mode. What sequence does is these three buttons are now used in sequence. So if I press that button once, I get an up function. If I press it twice, I get the second function. If I press it a third time, I get the stop function and so on. So this will go button one, two, three, and then it goes up four, five, back down, six, seven. So as long as I keep tapping that button, it's going to cycle through these functions. Now, once all of the buttons have been configured and we have a configuration as we need it, we would want to set that configuration to the keypad. And that's done from the set config button at the top left. Now, once we set that configuration, it's always nice to go back and clear the data so that we can get that config to verify that it's been taken. So I've now set this configuration on my keypad. I can use the clear data field to default every function in the keypad settings. And then using the get config button here, it will pull the commands from the keypad from that current configuration. This helps us verify what configuration has been actually set to the keypad. Now, once this has been completed, once all of the buttons have been configured, we can also save these settings. 
This is very useful if you say have 10 or more keypads on a project. You can create a default configuration, save those settings, and then import those settings to apply to another keypad. Uh, this way you would only have to change some minor things such as button presses or maybe just a group address to apply those same functions to another keypad in the project. This will be all that's needed to configure and use the SDN keypad with Shade or Screen products.